here now live from the Saratoga backstretch. As promised before the break, happy to be joined by John Terranova. Good morning, John. Good morning, Seth. And I was going to bring in my oven mitts, but I thought uh, <laughs> maybe that's too much. I'm the Gallagher of... Uh, uh, horse racing uh, commentators, but uh, man, you were red hot over the weekend. You have to be thrilled. Yeah, no, it's been a great uh, first couple of weeks. Good start to the meet, and uh, everybody, the whole team's doing a great job, and the horses are firing. They're running well, and uh, the spots are coming up the right way. Record uh, currently 13 starts, five wins, a second and a third, three of those over Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We'll take a look at a couple of those in, in a moment, but before we do that, do you set a goal before you head to Saratoga, and, and now did you have to reset it after the weekend? <laughs> yeah, I mean, everybody wants to come up here and run well. You're hoping you get off to a good start and get the, you know, get the flow going, the rhythm in the barn and everything. Um, you know, we had a lot of horses doing well coming up here. We brought the ones that we thought, you know, were ready to run right off the bat. I mean, you just don't know. I mean, if you're going to win, are you going to run well and everything? Uh, but everything's falling into place so far, and... Uh, you know, week to week, day to day, really, we just go by feel and, and how the horses are, are doing. And, uh, you know, we've landed in the right spots and, they, and they've stepped up. And uh, talk a little bit about that, the, the nuts and bolts of the game. You said you brought the horses up. And, uh, how many horses do you have here? How many downstate? And do you shuttle during the meet? We do. We do. We um, switch up. I don't like to bring too many up here. It's very busy up here. I've got the ones that are pretty forward and ready. Um, We've got right now at the moment 18 up here, 19 up here, but um, I've got a couple of stalls, you know, empty, you know, if we claim something or we ship one up for a few days to run and then back. Um, Tanya's down to Belmont with about 26 right now. And, um, you know, we've got some two-year-olds down there getting ready for later in the meet, hopefully, and uh, some other older horses that'll be coming up soon. So we'll be changing it in and out as, as the weeks go on. Very good. And talk a little bit about, uh, just give me your background. Your, you and your wife, Tonya, who you mentioned, uh, run the barn. And talk a little bit about the background, how you guys got together and uh, became the team you are today. Yeah, well, we met way back in 91. <clears throat> she was working for Brian Mayberry and happened to be shipping uh, with some steak horses to... Oh, so she was based out in Southern California. Oh, she's California. from California, yeah. yeah. She started out there and... Uh, that goes back to the connection with Bob Baffer and all that from, from way back. So we met that summer, um, actually the, the following, su yeah, that, that summer following the meet back at Belmont, she had gone on and uh, come down there. And uh, we've been together since then. She was working for Brian. I left and went on my own with a few horses out to California beginning in 92. Uh, you know, we continued dating and everything. I stayed out there for, you know, in, well into 93 and we came back, uh, Came back east, and uh, Tanya decided to uh, stay with me, and you know, left Brian, and they all went back to California. And we stayed in New York, and uh, here we are uh, today, all these years later. The rest is history. Yes, oh, sir. What's your background? How did you get into the game? Uh, my dad owned some horses growing up, um, so I was always around uh, the horses as a young young guy, and um, we'd come up here for the summer. You know, when it was just the four weeks, we'd spend half the summer down in Long Island, and then. The second half of the summer, just August up here, we'd rent a house, you know. Yeah, just started out hanging around the barn, walking hots and everything, and helping out and doing this and that. Went on to college and everything. Came back to the racetrack and just decided to stay. Very good. And uh, talk a little bit about, uh, again, the, the nuts and bolts of the game. Part of it is getting your name out there and meeting new owners and whatnot. And talk a little bit about the weekend because advertising pays, even if you're not paying for the <laughs> advertising. And to have John uh, uh, Colmus, uh, Larry Colmus, say your name uh, a few times over the weekend has to make an impression up in the box seats. I, I, I think especially this time of the year yeah. it does. Everyone's watching. You know, we win races, you know, Aqueduct, Belmont, other places, but, you know, Saratoga, everyone's watching every race every day. There's a lot of eyes on this on the game up here this time of year. So it's important. It's, it's, it's nice to win. You know, fortunately, we've got a great group of owners that we train for, several different ones, and some have been with us for many, many years. And, uh, you know, I've got great support with them. And, uh, just happy to be doing well for for everybody yeah, you know, that's it, involved. It, again, it's it's a lot of fun up here at Saratoga, and it does get the word out because of the big crowds. And talk a little bit about that. I always like to ask the trainers and the jockeys. This is the big show. You're playing in front of the full house. Is it more fun to win up here? Walk into the winner's circle? Have it, the yeah, it is. I mean, it, of course, it's nice to win anywhere, but you know, especially here, this time of year is special for uh, for everybody that's involved, and uh, you know, from the grooms and everybody in the barn and, and our assistants and everybody that works with the horses, our riders, so everybody's got their eyes focused on Saratoga. So for sure, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good feeling Very being good. able to win up here. And take me through a day, a day in the life of a trainer <laughs> at Saratoga. What time does the alarm go off and what time do you hit the pillow at night? 
Well, mine goes up 4.30. You know, fortunately, we're not, you know, here with, you know, 40, 50, 60 horses spread all over the place. So, you know, we've got a tight group, uh, good crew. So everybody's, you know, there every day, does their job. But, you know, I get up about 4.30. Try and get here about 5.30 or so, 5.15, and then uh, we'll get our first set out, sometimes quarter to six. We're not, you know, having a rush to get on the track because, like I said, we don't have big numbers here at the moment. But, um, you know, it, it pretty much just flows through the morning. We're very uh, kind of laid back and loose in our barn. Everybody knows their job. A lot of our guys have been with us for a long time. So, it, uh, you know, we're just hoping the horses are healthy, sound each day, and we kind of just go by feel day to day. And See then how's the, how's the day wrap up? For, and compare a non-racing day to a racing day? Well, I mean, <clears throat> the non-racing day, obviously, we're not looking forward to anything in the afternoon. Um, the racing day, sometimes at the end of the morning, we're going over to school a group of horses or a few or just one sometimes. We're getting ready for, you know, afternoon racing if we've got something in, just getting everything prepped for the day. Um, and, you know, that's pretty much it. Hoping the morning goes through uh, smoothly and everybody's sound and healthy at the end of the day. And. Um, you know, then we'll see. I'm looking ahead to certain races, seeing how they're training, leading up to it, seeing if, you know, they're ready to be entered or not. And, you know, that's pretty much it. Thinking about the next day and later on, uh, you know, going going forward with other horses, what we kind of need to do and not do with certain ones. So that, that's it changes. Uh, that's a good piece you of know. information, too, for folks who, who are fans of the game but maybe not are familiar with the nuts and bolts. You're looking at the condition book. You know what you have in your barn. How far out are you planning races? Obviously, it depends on how the horse then trains up to the, but, sure. but you know, I'm sure you have a game plan at least set. And how far out does that work I, looking at the condi condition book? Yeah, I mean, I've got, we've got races in the back of our mind for a little while that we're looking at, but um, obviously nothing set in stone. They've got to be doing well and they've got to give us that right feel and, and, and that vibe going in. And, um, you know, that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, I don't, just because I mark, uh, a race down in the book doesn't mean we're going there. You know, we, we mark a lot of different spots, and, and we know a couple weeks ahead of time when the racers are, are coming. You know, if we've got stake, stake horses, then that's a, a different story. That's pretty much set far in advance um, when the races will be. But, you know, they've got to be doing well. they got to give me that the green light for the All right. And a couple of that certainly were given the green light. Let's take a look at a couple of the wins uh, from, uh, well, this one's from last Sunday, uh, the 10th race. We're going to look at the number 12 gray walls, get it done at 9 to 1. And also your ROI at the meet. Uh, the, not, not only have you have to be happy, but the folks who are following John Terranova have to, have to be happy as well. Number 12 gray walls gets out, really takes them all the way. And it's interesting because stuck out in the outside post position, but holds them off in the stretch here. This was a really nice performance. She's a very nice filly, and uh, I was kind of shocked that she went off uh, at such long odds. She had run um, some good races as a two-year-old to get some class, class fillies. Uh, we laid her off for the winter, let her grow up a bit. I had her down at Tampa Bay with me training, and um, she came back. She got a little sick at the end of the, uh, the meet there, uh, so we were a little delayed getting her started uh, this season. But uh, she came back really well, broke her maiden first out as a three-year-old, came back with a, with a, a good solid run. Uh, she was second back at Belmont a few weeks back, and uh, she just came up here doing really, really well. She drew the far outside post, so maybe that had something to do with it, I, I, I would expect. But, you know, she's got speed. She's got enough uh, speed, and, and, and our, our, uh, our young jock, Eric Tonsell, he's doing a, a great job. He's been riding a lot of the horses for us. He's aggressive. He's, he's got great hands, and uh, they're responding really well for him. He knows this filly really well. Yeah, so pretty much wasn't afraid to use her earlier to get in a good spot. But which I love to see as a better because uh, there have been a lot of sitting back and kind of being a little bit conservative. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, the five-pound apprentices don't mind going out there. And I think he's the only apprentice at the meet so far, and he's having a, a nice meet as well. So. Yeah, very good rider. Uh, speaking of Eric Consell, he was on uh, Harp and Halo as well going back to Friday, race number eight. 23 to 1 harp and halo but a fairly uh, similar scenario in that also stuck in the outside post position also took them virtually all the way around she was yeah n very nice filly we've always had high expectations of her um really classy girl we um started her out on turf sprinting last year as a three-year-old up here needed a, you know a little bit more ground in front of her uh for her to show her best but then again you know she did start out against some decent fillies uh, that she'd run against in her first couple of starts then i took her down to tampa for the winter she raced on dirt which you know she she's not a dirt filly but she was good enough down there at that meet to get herself going and, and uh, a little more seasoned and that's what we were looking to do we tried to run her on the grass in her last start at tampa but it did rain off and 
she was able to handle the stretch out. And this the was the turns. first off a decent layup. March 20, March 27th yeah, was the last yeah. race. Yeah, she ran well. So she won three in a row, but got DQ'd in the race, uh, that last race stretching out down there. And uh, it, it was good for us. <laughs> Actually, in the long run, she saved that condition. Oh, condition, so yeah. It worked out uh, well coming here. And then we just, you know, we were getting yeah, a little Yeah, the condition, I'm just huh? looking at the condition up here. You get 90,000 per head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Save so. the condition for Saratoga. Yeah, never get too uh, <laughs> upset. Sometimes things work out for the best <laughs> someday. Right. You know? Very good. And uh, so there are a couple of winners to look at. Taka Joe, also a winner at 12 to 1. Cryptic Comet, who helped me out that day at uh, 10 to 1. Draft Day kicked the meat off for you. So five winners again in 13 starts. It's just been phenomenal. Really a great start to the meet. Also, before we let you go, though, wanted to catch up El Kabir, uh, who earlier this year won the Jerome, won the Gotham, third in the wood. And that one went to the sidelines. A little ding in the foot before yep. the Derby, right? But give us an update. Yep. Yeah, He. we decided, you know, he had run nine times through the winter. We, we, we survived a winter through through New York uh, and Aqueduct racing all winter. He'd had a hard campaign and um, you know obviously the Zayat family had American Pharaoh in the spotlight you know coming into the spotlight uh, at that point and um, decided let's just give him a proper rest and we gave him 60 days out in Kentucky. He got turned out and grew up and filled out. He looked great. Figure we'll get ready for the second half late, late in the year as a three-year-old let him grow up and uh, hopefully have a nice long career out of him. Um, He's down at Belmont training. He's been back in a few weeks, and um, everything's great. As a matter of fact, I just got off the phone with Tanya before we came on, and he just said he, he looks amazing. So uh, looking forward to getting him back later in the fall, and um, so far so good with, 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 him, with him. El Kabir, look forward to his return, and of course, as you said, owned by the Zayats, and I have to ask you before we let you go, also, as you said, Zayats also uh, own American Pharaoh. Bob Baffert very often when he comes east. He's uh, in your barn when he was up for the sales. He said he was on a recon mission for a potential uh, invasion for the Travers. Checked out your barn. Are you ready for the, uh, the, the brouhaha that will show up if he comes? Uh, we'll be ready, yeah. He's, uh, you know, we've done it all before. We had a, a great time at Belmont with him there. Here's a little bit different uh, setup and, and scene. Obviously, it's going to be very busy, but... Uh, I tell you, he's a special horse. It'd be a real treat if he does come, and and just for uh, even us to be around him and something near near him. That's it's just it's like second to none. Yeah, so, we're, 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 all, we're all we all have our fingers crossed, and we're looking forward to it. If you whisper to Bob in, oh, the, in the next couple of weeks, tell him we're, <laughs> we want him to come. No question about it. But. John Terranova and his barn also doing very, very well up here at Saratoga. As I said, I needed my asbestos oven mitts in here. Red hot over the weekend. And, John, we congratulate you on a great start. Hope uh, you continue throughout the meet. We wish you a lot of good luck. We appreciate the visit this uh, morning. Thanks so much, Seth. <laughs>